two and three. Breaking news, huh? We're going to talk about it from a Cowboys perspective. And I get it. We can't win this fight because we don't know how to fight. They didn't have the money for the five-year, $50 million for Bobby Wag. They didn't have it. They didn't have it. We broke. We're broke, baby. It is what it is. We heartless. We don't got a bone in our body. It is what it is, Cowboy Nation. I can't cry about it. We can't worry about it, right? Because y'all already knew that this was going to go down. But LBA, according to Stephen Jones, is better than Bobby Wagner. He's a better option. Luke Gifford is a better option than Bobby. Let me know if I'm lying, Cowboy Nation. Let me know. It is what it is at this point. As we set up the, pl- the spaceship. It is what it is. Let me get this thing going. Appreciate it every last one of you guys. Appreciate you. Let's go. Like I say, the name is Law Nation. We talk Cowboys sports talk and beyond. And, of course, this is old news to most, right? This is old news to most because this is what we do. Uh, a lot of you guys already knew that the Cowboys were not going to do this anyway. Even I believe even if Bobby said, look, you know what? I would take, I'd take a three-year deal for $25 million, right? I just have a, a notion that the Cowboys are still say, nah, that's too much money, man. What are you trying to do? You trying to rob us, man, you know? It literally seems like we're in a nightmare that we can't get out of until the season start, until after the draft at least get in the way. And so that can at least guide us out of this misery just for a quick second. Let me try to build this plane while it's in there. Here we go. Yeah, so that's just what it is. Basically, a two-year, $20 million worth in incentive. This is Griffin. Yeah, my head hurt, Jay Lombardi. It don't. You know, hey, it is what it is. And then, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Thief! Stop! Thief! Come back! Thief! (laughs) That's what we feeling right now, man. You know, that's exactly what we feeling right now because, let me play it again. (laughs) Thief! Stop! Thief! Come back! Thief! (laughs) <laughs> let me let me pull my uh my energy drew juice over here purified water time baby and if you're a rams fan you got to be saying to yourself man my organization do whatever it takes for us to get to the super bowl and win it right my organization is doing everything possible <laughs> and, and our organization with that leg in stop thief come back thief <laughs> that's what we do hey <laughs> Oh, my gosh, man. I don't know how much I can tell y'all. Look, overpaid for what? Hey, look, there's no such thing. Look, if anybody, look, I graduated top of my class in the econ. I know I, I'm not sitting here saying that I don't know math. I may not can talk to you guys, but numbers are universal language. I know for sure that where I met, in order to get my positioning, you got to, you got to graduate with at least a 3.0. You can't just get this job. You know, I know for sure. And I know that those guys are being ass and I'm just a lowly uh, a guy that's sitting in this studio right now. I get it. The Jones family, they know more than we do. But the money speaks for itself in the future. I can tell you one thing. The money speaks for itself in the future. The 2023 salary cap is going to balloon, blossom, blow up. There's no rhyme of reason of you should be shy of any big number contract because the money, the cap is going to grow. The cap is going to grow. So 
when you when you look at the deal with Von Miller and how they're setting up the money aspect of it, it's because they know for sure the cap is going to grow. It's going to be an unbelievable number. Don't you guys know the power of TV, Amazon? If you look, you guys don't have to listen to me. But man, invest and, and listen to your financial advisors. Man, you got to start investing, man. Amazon just signed on what is with the, the new TV deal is $111 billion. So, yes, if a player say, hey, they want 11 to $12 million a year, I would quickly say, um, if you're a certain kind of caliber of player, I'm going to stretch your contract so it can hit those type of numbers. That's the reality of it. Shout out to you, Robert. <laughs> My, look, this thing is finna go up. But for you in the Cowboys organization and everybody else that don't want to listen to me, they say, no, nah, man, we don't have money. It's the, it's the stupidity of it. And we expecting to win. Shame. Shame. Oh, my gosh. Shame. Nah, C says, wait for Amazon to split and then buy it. Yeah, no, 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 no. Let me, let me speak biblical for you guys from, from that aspect of it. You remember, you recall a parable that the mighty JC said that, hey, there was a talent that one guy, and I'm just paraphrasing, I'm not going to give you details of it, you know, that one guy took his talent and said, okay, I'm going to dig it and put it in a hole, and I'm going to wait for next year when the king come back and asks for it, I can give him back the talent. Because I preserve said talent. And there were other guys, I'm just paraphrasing, I'm freestyling with it, that had their talent and they went and gave it to the exchangers, right? And what the king did is said, oh, look what you've done with my talent because it's not yours. You went out there and you multiplied your talent. Therefore, I'm going to give you more for what you did. And the one that did the least with it, I'm not going to give you nothing because you're wicked. You're, you're, you're unruling. You're, you're not wise of your talent. And what the Cowboys do is they take the talent and they say, hey, I'm going to cover it. I don't want to spend it. And this is the reality of it. And you guys can, you guys can call me crazy. But... It's bigger than that. That that is exactly how the universe talk to each other. It's nothing to do about the good book. That is exactly the codes on how the universe talk to each other. There's people right now that's watching this video. They got talent beyond their measures, right? Got unbelievable skills, skills, and they're scared to death to showcase it because they say, "Man, I'm gonna wait till next year." Oh, I'm going to wait for three years to start up my YouTube channel. I'm going to wait for four years to start up. When, when everything get right, I'm going to wait for four years to start up my Facebook account. Oh, and start, instead of starting now, they'll wait. There's people right now that's listening. They got money that they done saved up in the account. They got ten to $12,000 just sitting there. And they said, you know what? I'm going to wait till I get to $20,000. Then I'm going to start my business. No. Start it now. <laughs> start it now. You got the opportunity to start it now. But there will there'll be people that listen to me and say, nah, man, you're crazy. Just like there was times when people was watching Noah when he was building the boat. They said, man, it didn't rain. It never rained on this earth. What are you doing, dude? You crazy. You must be out your mind, man. There ain't no rain going to flood going to come. And then when those drops come, start coming out of the sky, Somebody, some, I bet you that some of the same people that was talking about Noah said, you know what, hey, can you give me a two-by-four, you know? <laughs> hey, man, can I just get the twigs? I need to start building now. No, it's too late. And that is what the Cowboys are doing. It's literally too late. <laughs> uh, uh, look, don't look at the fact. Think about this. I, I see D-Block says $10 million a year, blah, blah, blah. It's crazy. It seems far-fetched. 
this is the year-to-year league. You're trying to win yearly. You're not trying to say, okay, I just want to look good. The reality of it, the last coach that got the most playoff wins for the Dallas Cowboys is the name of Barry Switzer since Jimmy Johnson. Barry Switzer had five playoff wins. The Cowboys in 27 years have four playoff wins. And y'all keep telling me, Law, you, you're being too negative. What you want me to lie to kick it and say, hey, man, we're getting better, though, you know? We have four playoff wins since 1996. Barry Switzer had five. We haven't trumped what Barry Switzer done. And, of course, that was all with Jimmy Johnson's people. But y'all want to come here to tell me that law, man, you don't know what I'm talking. You don't know what you're talking about, man. You, you out your mind, man. <laughs> um, f- look, just let that sizzle down into your mind. Let that sink down into it. Four playoff wins. And let yet along we talking about we doing the right things to get to the Super Bowl. We got four playoff wins. You think I'm making this stuff up? And, baby, we bleed silver and blue. We watch this team from sunup to sundown. But we don't have enough money. (laughs) L.A. Rams went through some wholesale changes, right? They went through some wholesale changes to get to where they at. They said, yeah, man, we'll pay for this for Jalen. Oh man, yeah, we'll pay for well, look, look, so you 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 mad you you're mad about this? Wait, we we'll come get you. Oh, it didn't work out, we'll get rid of you. Aaron Donald, look, I can imagine this right here. If the Cowboys had Aaron Donald, they would have said, you know what, we don't need a Sue. We don't need a Austin, what was it uh, uh was it Ashawn Robinson? We don't need him. If we got Sue, that's all we need. They wouldn't even build around them. They would literally say, Sue is all we need. But all I've seen was what the Rams did is said, even with Aaron Donald, they knew that they had to go get a Sue. They knew that they had to get an Sean Robinson. They knew that they had to go get uh, uh, who else? Who else they got? Somebody else that can put be placed inside to help them. Because they knew that he couldn't get it by himself. They knew that they had to go get a Jalen Ramsey. These are these names are not just cheap. They knew what they had to do. They didn't sit around and sit on their heads. They said, look, we got to go make sure we better our best. But if the Cowboys. Look, the, the craziest thing of it all, Cowboy Nation. We still I seen an article out there with the Dallas Cowboys. They went and got Leonard Floyd. Yeah, I mean, they went and got some people. Look. The Dallas Cowboys, I, I've seen an article out there, and it could have been um, it could have been um, uh, the report from James Slater. They still talking about praised and Tyron Smith. They made a change in the directions on how they're going to draft. And they drafted Tyron Smith to re-solidify the offensive line. That was in 2011. Right? This the year 2022, and you're still talking about, hey, man, we went and drafted good with Tyron Smith. We went and drafted good with Travis Frederick, who retired. We went and drafted good with Zach Martin. And they still digging up the fact that, hey, they did a change of philosophy and scheme when they went and picked Zach Martin over. Oh, what's the guy, Johnny Manziel? Excuse me. As good and as brilliant as Zach Martin is, him and Johnny got the same amount of rings on their hands, and that's zero. So stop using what we did in the past to elevate what we're doing now. We still is not we still not moving. Yes, Zach Martin was a great draft pick for us. But him and Johnny Manziel is holding the same amount of rings, and that's zero. That's the reality of it. And we love Zach Martin. But stop saying that the Cowboys are drafting offensive linemen well and when we don't have nothing to show for it for. Good grief. 
<laughs> I, I can't make this stuff up. But this is what they do. They they try to tell us that the moves that we're making are the are, are great for the organization, great for this and great for that. But the reality is, you ever seen the Titanic and the people were still playing the piano, people were still playing the violin and everything, and no matter what they did, they were moving furniture around. Regardless, they were all going down. <laughs> That's what we're doing. We're moving furniture around. We're moving furniture around. So that is just the reality of it. Other teams saying, hey, there's a hole on this ship. We jumping off of this ship. We getting rid of this person. And we're going to try to get something back in return to plug this hole. We're going to jump on this little boat for a little while. Yes, we're going to jump on a little boat for a little while. But when they finish that big boat, we're going to jump back on it. The Cowboys been patching up the doggone same boat. And people are still digging another hole on the other side of the boat. Because we are the most, even though we are the most celebrated franchise in the world, we are the most divided franchise in the world. We still talking about Tony Romo. I've literally, every day I go live, every day I jump into my chat in my community box. There's people talking about, man, I can't wait. We just need, if, if we can have Tony Romo back now, I'm like, wait a minute. Tony Romo and Candace Romo is fine watching the game. But people still want Tony Romo back. My goodness. <laughs> Time to save money, Nate. Appreciate you. And missing every hole, Akeem. Now, now we, we patch it up just a little bit. <laughs> Make sure the water don't hit the boiler's room. And then uh, we order a new special, specialized, you know, motor. And we buy that in. And we all say, hey, this shiny motor is looking good now. But then it's another hole somewhere else. It's literally putting the lipstick on the, pen, uh, on the pig. Yeah. Story time. Appreciate you, Chris Perez. Appreciate you. And, and it is what it is. But <clears throat> what should the Cowboys do now? It's not the fact. It's not the fact that it's doom and gloom time that the Cowboys didn't get Bobby Wags. I'm, I'm not saying that. And I'm definitely not saying that the Cowboys will not be successful heading into the 2022 season. But I can flat out tell you guys that we are doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Yeah, some people still want Dez back, Paul. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. We don't, I think we are the only organization that do that, right? Okay, man, can't wait. Look, I can't wait to see Dez back in the uniform now, you know. <laughs> oh, my gosh, man. Uh, Signed J.C. Treader. Well, there should be, because the temperature of the organization, there should be a hush higher, right? So whoever we fill into that gap before the draft, this is going to take away some of the burdens. And that's crazy for us to do it that way, too. Uh, hey, Law, do you think we're still favorites in the NFC East? It's from Charlie. We are. We are. As it, as crazy as this sounds, and this is just me not placating for the Cowboys. No, 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 no. As crazy as this sounds, at least we do know how to beat the Eagles, the Washington football team in the Giants. Now, as uh, far as us uh, sweeping them, it, it may be harder, but I'm quite sure we would still be on top of those boys. <laughs> Stephen Jordan says, uh, the definition of insanity. This is crazy, dog. Cowboy fans are toxic, like uh, Randy Gregory said. This is from D-Boys, 92. We are toxic because we are crying out for some type of relief. We're crying out for hope. We have the audacity of hope right now because that's all we have. And that is why we are toxic because nobody point and smear 
and shame and ridicule us more than the Dallas Cowboys. All today, I posted the Trayvon Diggs uh, 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 stat sheet of what Jalen Ramsey had to say about the Dallas Cowboys' Trayvon Diggs. And all today, all I can hear was Trayvon Diggs is trash. Trayvon Diggs is trash. Because he give up a lot of yards or what have you. Because we are toxic because the four-letter network and everybody that listen to them from word for word, they think it's gold. And they think that yards allowed is something only Trayvon Diggs give up. Something only Trayvon Diggs do. No one else. And what's happening here is you hear the fan base from the other teams and other organizations echo the BS that most of the four ladder and whatever say. And they become miniatures, miniature trolls of their own team. And that is the hardest thing to overcome. The people who never who, who never understand the rudiments of football trying to tell you what to do. And then when you explain it to it, it's like me trying to break down calculus to my five-year-old daughter. It's going to go in one ear and out the other. And that is, that, that is unfortunately, the end, ba- the, 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 the end game in the base of this particular franchise. And they make hands over fists. I literally have a dude that says, hey, the, cow- the Cowboy fans should boycott the Cowboys. Boycott it won't do nothing. They do revenue sharing. There are more casual fans than diehard fans. There's literally people who don't even know who Bobby Wagner is. Right? Who never even know who LV is. They only know who LV is by number, 55. They only know Luke Gifford by, hey, that's 57. There's more people that watch the game that look at that juxtaposed to people like you guys that's watching. And they will be the people that turn on the television and watch the game. Some people turn the TV on and just leave it on as noise. And it's the Cowboys that's on in the background. And lo and behold, the Cowboys will get those ratings and those views because there are more casual fans than diehard fans. Excuse me, there's revenue sharing, so you can boycott all you want and stop trying to buy Cowboys merch. All that's going to do, Cowboy Nation and those that's listening, is going to get those individuals who run those stores fired. The general manager or the store manager or the store supervisor, get you and get them fired because they didn't hit that quota. Jerry is making hands over fists Money outside of football. He made money in this Super Bowl. He have real estate properties. People fail to realize you can you don't you don't have to buy a single ticket next year. He's still gonna make profit. The contract, the stadium that was built was from his people. Understand that, Cowboy Nation. So you stop buying merch, ain't gonna do nothing. And the TV deal was already approved for eleven years. The 111 or 120 billion dollars. That money is paid in advance. <laughs> so, you know, I'm gonna stop buying cowboy merch. I'm gonna stop. That is not doing nothing. That's nonsense. They billionaires, they oil people, man. <laughs> real estate, they real estate people, man. It ain't gonna hurt the ain't gonna hurt the bottom line. The Joneses are building this team to win the East. Other contenders are building their team to compete in the Super Bowl. B Bird, I, I never looked at it like that. And and you know what? Dang, you're right on the money. Uh I, I said this out before. B Bird, uh, appreciate you, man. Uh let me see if I can find you. Uh, and I'm gonna read the other super chat. You right on the money because when Ezekiel Elliott was drafted, you know, that's when the Bama boys were created. That's when the Bama boys were created for the Washington football team. That's when they were all created. They said, hey, we got to get some big boys inside to stop this running attack, to stop. 
And that's what the NFC East do, right? They they build teams, they build their teams to to win that particular division, right? And then they try to get into the playoffs and win it from there. Law, do you have more evidence? Yeah. I think that of course Fletcher Cox was already drafted, but that's when the even the Eagles, they went and re-solidified their front to stop the run. And the Eagles for many of, of years been pretty much top 10 in stopping the run. So you're right, B-Bird. This NFC East, they do draft to, to, defeat, to defeat one another, right? And um, the Jones family have been a masterful, masterful at doing that, at beating the, this division. It's lopsided. All you got to do is type in uh, on your Google, the Dallas Cowboys versus the Eagles. All-time record, you will see that, man, the Cowboys – miles and miles ahead of the Eagles. The Dallas Cowboys versus the Washington football team, you will see that they are miles and miles away. Those numbers, it shouldn't even be a rivalry at this point. The Dallas Cowboys versus the Giants, miles and miles ahead of them, right? And if you look at the even the Giants, when they went to draft, they went and drafted Dexter Lawrence. They went and da- drafted some guys inside, beefy guys to stop the run. And the Cowboys every year countered. But what B Bird is essentially saying that teams are looking at it like, man, Rams know. Look, we trying to get to the Super Bowl. That's why they read up Matthew Stafford for forty million dollars a year, right? That's why they said, okay, Jalen Ramsey, hey, get right. We are gonna make sure we take good care of you. Hey, Aaron Donald, will you please come back for another cup of coffee? Please don't retire on us. We got you a nice little package that's waiting in the in the mail for you. So you're right, B-Bird. Uh, they are building to win other things outside of winning their division. Quincy Sands, appreciate Law, you. This is bull sugar. I'm upset. 10 mil a year. We have 15 mil before 6 over 1 and 25 mil after 6 1, and we couldn't pay him. 10 mil go to draft. 15 mil? Wow. <laughs> the, the Cowboys literally is like the parable. They got their talent, and they say, okay, we're going to take it, and we're going to put it in the sand. We're going to put it in the sand. We're going to cover it. So when it's time, look, literally every situation, that's why we don't get nothing in return. We didn't get nothing in return for Amari Cooper. I'm not going to talk about that fifth, fourth, sixth round draft pick. We got literally nothing in return for Lyle Collins. Literally. The $10 million that you get back, what you going to do with it? Oh, you going to re-up who? Schultz? You going to throw some more money at uh, maybe Jeremy Sprinkle? You know? (laughs) Oh, my God. I can't make this stuff up, Cowboy Nation. We ain't playing to win. Oh, but you know who picked up on that, Cowboy Nation? Don't you know who picked up on that? Let me see if I can play it and find his audio. And I'm not mad. I'm not mad at all, Cowboy Nation. I'm just spitting to you guys the truth. There's no way you can say this team is better. It's what area are you trying to get better in? On the football field or in the financial salary cap area? What area has been the dominant thought here? And obviously, it's been the salary cap. So we can't say that they are getting any better on the football field. Did y'all hear that? Do, should I repeat this, por favor? <laughs> Let me repeat this, por favor. Let me repeat this. There's no way you can say this team is better. It's what area are you trying to get better in? On the football field or in the financial salary cap area? What area has been the dominant thought here? And obviously, it's been the salary cap. So we can't say that they are getting any better on the football field. Now, that is the reality of it. Now, I had my slew of people to hit me up and say, well, Law, can we just wait until the season kickoff before you give your analysis and your thoughts or what have you on this? No. I'm giving you guys the real play-by-play as it goes through. Now, can the Cowboys flip this thing all around? Yeah, and I'll be the first one out here, you know, live on this platform telling you guys, hey, man, dog, I was wrong. I ain't going to have no big egos over here. I'm going to say, look, dog, I was wrong, man. Stephen Jones, man, he was right, man, with the slick back, with the shades or the glasses. You know, he was right. He was right with everything, with the movement and everything of getting rid of uh, Randy Gregory, getting rid of Amari Cooper. Hey, not pretty much paying attention to Lyle's contract and getting rid of him or what have you. Hey, man, he was right. 
James Washington is going to the Pro Bowl now, right? You know? <laughs> but the thing is, we literally, like I said before, like the Lobo said, due diligence, yeah. Look, we literally, like I said before at the end of last season, I said, man, we got to at least, this before we got rid of Amari Cooper and the whole Lyle Collins and all of the other stuff with Randy Gregory. I literally said, man, 12 and 5 is now the floor. It's the floor. 12 and 5 is now the floor. <laughs> it is. Let me know if I'm wrong. Because the moment the Cowboys lose more than five games, oh my goodness. Oh, hell is going to break through. Break up out of there. And on top of that, minimum, you got to at least win a playoff game. You got to. You got to. There's no way that you can go through this entire season and be worse than what you were last year. And still, if even if, when you do make it to the I'm saying we're going to make it to the playoff and don't win a playoff game. There's no way. It will be it will be considered a failure of a season. But listen back to let me play this again. Play it again. Play it again. There's no way you can say this team is better. It's what area are you trying to get better in on the football field or in the financial salary cap area? What area has been the dominant thought here? And obviously it's been the salary cap. So we can't say that they are getting any better on the football field. Ooh, <laughs> I know me on that video. But, man, you know, shout out to Bobby, man. Shout out to the L.A. Rams, man, fans out there. And shout out to everybody that, that pretty much watching this channel right here. But this is the situation, Cowboy Nation. We must, we must, we have to draft well. Let me go over here and put this up there. Jump over there. Just so that you guys can see what I was talking about when we was talking about that. Come on, what audio? Play it audio. Theoretically, you know. Watch this hard question right here. How are you better with be lesser players? Theoretically, Our, you know, you, you don't have Amari. You, last year you told us this receiving core was as good as any in the league. Right. With, with, with those, probably the big three, and then you add what Cedric has done. You lose Cedric and Amari. That How hurts. Can you, yeah, I mean, we have to get better. I mean, we're going to have to find ways to, to be better. Uh, without those two players, and we got to have guys uh, step up. Obviously, Gallup missed a lot of time last year. Uh, you know, think he'll come back uh, recovered. He may miss two or three games there at the beginning, but we're going to have to uh, uh, draft well and have some guys step up. Uh, you know, even more so as uh, we move forward. But you know, unfortunately, you can't keep. Right. We knew we weren't going to be able to keep everybody, and, and there's no question. Amari Cooper's a great football player. Would we love? Would we love to keep him? Would we'd love to keep him, but we just. Uh, you know, didn't have the, the cap space to do both Gallup and Amari. But even with, in, in defense with Gregory, you wanted to keep Gregory. He was part of... To a point, we wanted to keep Gregory. To the point, you wanted to keep Gregory. Now, you said you didn't have enough cap space. And if you guys watched that full interview, because I only got a snippet of it on, this, uh, plat on that platform, if you guys watched the full interview, he said, well, basically, essentially, you know, with the money that we saved by not signing, Randy Gregory, uh, we applied it to LVE's Luke Gifford as well as Doris Armstrong. And if you throw in Dante Fowler, who is the wild card, by the way, he can come over here and be crazy for the Cowboys, especially since Dan Quinn. But what you're saying, basically, is me and Miss Piggy over here. We put, you see the little pretty list step on the pig. You know, it's pretty. It's basically, it's a three for one or four for one. It's a three for one deal. And they said, okay, heading into the draft, hey, we need help. We need help on the offensive line. And, of course, you got a big void in spot at wide receiver. I'm trying to be positive as possible, man, with this wide receiver core. But what you're essentially saying is that, and trust me, C.D. Lamb grew from year one to year two, and he's heading into year three, and that's normally when the wide receiver wake up, right? You know, that's the only when you say the wide receiver, God, dog, this dude is on fire. That's normally. 
But heading into year three, he's going to be an axe. He's going to have a lot of food on the plate. And it won't be a pig. He's going to have a lot of food on the plate. And he got to go up with, with the number ones or what have you. And that is a situation whereas we all know how this operation works with a offensive coordinator four years ever. You know, I wouldn't even be mad if we had a seasonal veteran play caller, right? That can mix in some runs, that can mix in some throws and keep people aloof of what we're trying to do. But man, oh man, we'll find out now. We will exactly know what this team is all about with Simi Fihoko ro- rolling up out of there. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be angry, negative about this team. But we'll find out Noah Brown, Simi Fihoko, and James Washington, what he's going to do. But the Cowboys did. How are you what better with be lesser players? You say again. You know, I'm you, play you don't have Amari. You, last year you told us this receiving core was as good as any in the league. Right. With, with, with those fellas, the big three, and then you add what Cedric has done. You lose Cedric and Amari. That How hurts. You, yeah. I mean, we have to get better. I mean, we're going to have to find ways to, to be better uh, without those two players. And we got to have guys uh, step up. Obviously, Gallup missed a lot of time last year. What you guys need to hear is that we didn't necessarily lose just Cedric and Amari. We lost Gallup. Gallup would not be here for the first month. And Gallup would not be ready even going into the four or five weeks. And if you rush him, you may lose him for the whole year. So when I watch these notable players, shout out to John Mashota. And the Cowboys pay close attention to these guys. I might as well. I can literally. I got tape on Chris Olave, Devin Lord. I got tape on him. I got Jordan Davis tape. Charles Cross. Uh, I can find his tape. Ryman. I can get tape on him. Uh, Kenyon Green. I got tape on Kenyon. And I got tape on Zion and Drake London and Traylon Burks. Uh, I can start now. Thank you for tuning in to the Law Nation Film Session as we take a deeper look at Drake London. Because the Cowboys tend to draft from their 30 visit. And if I'm a betting man, linebacker, you can scratch that name off the list. Defensive tackle, Jordan Davis, you can probably scratch that one off the list. It's going to go down to the nuts and bolts of what the Cowboys tend to do. And that's going to be guard. Or it's going to be a wide receiver. And that's what the noise we're going to hear. We might hear this right here. With the 24th pick, the Dallas Cowboys select Traylon Burks. Arkansas, wide receiver. That's what we're going to be listening to. And we're going to be scrambling to see, okay, how can we get back into the first? Can we trade back into the first and get a guard? But I don't think that they would draft Devin Lord with the 24th pick. Unless, and I don't see Nicobe Dean on this list, but unless they sitting right there at 24 and they get cute again for it. They get cute. You get cute like this pig. Ain't this pig sexy? Hey, oh, come on. You know, where my lipstick? You see the lipstick now? Yeah. They might, they might can do that. <clears throat> we, we did it last year. We had the tent pick. And then all of a sudden, the Dallas Cowboys traded with the Philadelphia Eagles. We were like, oh, wow. <laughs> And they knew that the, that the Eagles, they kind of overshoot, overshoot their, their hand and they said, okay, they need a wide receiver, right? And we kind of knew that they was going after that Bama kid. And we moonwalked back. And boy, even with that deal, well, we got a third or something like that. That was very risky. 
We got Chauncey Golston. So we'll find out what Chauncey going to do for us for the 2022 season. Sip the truth. Hate to say it, Law, but when kids are born with silver spoons in their mouth, they normally run the family business to the ground. Technically speaking, you're right. They do. They do. They do. And this is not the identity of the Cowboys. This is not. This is not who the Cowboys are. This is not Jerry Jones' team anymore. It's not. We are seeing a new era since when did when did when did this start it? You know, is this this gotta be 2013, 2014, right? When Stephen Jones literally took full command of everything. I don't like the Stephen Jones era. It's safe and secure, yeah. But safe, is, look, there's, how can I put this? The only hope, let me, let me get rid of the pig right quick. Get back, pig. The only hope that we have is this right here. Because I can see this happening. The only hope would be is that when Jerry fully stepped down, what Stephen Jones will do is he will not meddle as much with the coaches. He will empower the coach to coach, and Stephen will be all up in the front office, and he will be the guy that controlling the books and making sure that everything looks well with the T and the I's dotted. That's our only situation is when Jerry fully stepped down. And I'm not saying that Jerry Jones, and people get me all mixed up and say, well, Law, you saying that Jerry Jones is a horrible person. No, he's not. It's your damn act together. I don't like your attitude. He's not a horrible person. He's not a horrible human being. No. But he's a guy that meddles, and he's a guy that get in the way of the coaches. That's his only, that's his only pit fall to all of this. This is only pitfall. And the negative vibes that I get from Stephen Jones is that he is really, really refuses to use the money because he have a philosophy that he would like to take it all the way to the bank and say, I'm right and everybody else is wrong. I told you I was right about Dion of not picking him. Yeah, although we got the Super Bowl, but look how far it set us back in the cap. Daddy. I was right about Joey Galloway. Remember, you wanted to get Joey Galloway, go guns a-blazing, and saw what happened? And I let you do that. I let you do the Dion contract. I let you pay Moose Johnson, I believe at the time, was $40 million in 1997. The highest paid fullback ever. Go look it up. I don't think, I think outside of uh, all, was it Mike All-Star, uh, all, whatever, whatever his name is, Moose Johnson was the first fullback to ever get that type of coins and he said dad I told you about Roy Williams you didn't want to listen the last straw that broke the camel back was Brandon Carr all star yeah I'm going to say all star all star I think Moose Johnson was <laughs> was the last highest paid fullback in the National Football League <laughs> Steven is like uh the um the janky promoter this is from JV on Jones. Yeah. It is what it is. Moose was worth it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Moose was, man, but it was on the tail end of his career when they decided to give him that big coin. I think it was like in 1997. He, he 40 million or something like that. I could be off on the numbers, but it was the richest contract ever to a fullback. And uh I can only imagine the way Stephen Jones was looking at that man saying, man, all of that money. Father, you're crazy. Come on, Dad. Carr literally never missed a game. I think uh, Carr, the the problem is two foes that happened to Carr. Number one <laughs> being that the biggest game of the Dallas Cowboys pretty much 
Dez Bryant Megatron. You guys remember that, right? Re- remember Dez Bryant Megatron. Just somehow it had to be that Brandon Carr was in the spotlight. And those big plays, it was on Brandon Carr, unfortunately. And we're not even going to talk about the safety that missed was coming across the top. We're not going to talk about that. But it was still on Brandon Carr. And everybody was like, man, the Cowboys paid all of that money to see that dude trailing and chasing. But people fail to realize, man, Megatron was going to do that to anybody outside of, a, of maybe a prime time. You know, <laughs> that was just Megatron's year, right? And um, and then fast forwarding to, I believe, was it uh, 20... Uh, 14 or something like that. The catch that Odell Beckham did on uh, Brandon Carr, those two plays left an everlasting impression on most Cowboy fans' mindset of Brandon Carr, and he never recovered from there, never. The Odell catch and the Megatron. But we won that Odell's catch game. But what was, what was more damning to Brandon Carr's career was the Megatron game. The Megatron game. A lot of people fail to realize that, was, that Megatron game, it it really destroyed any impressions or any thoughts that you had of Brandon Carr. Yeah. So that's the reality of it. Eagles look scary with three first round draft picks. I'm only looking at the Eagles to be the Eagles with the three first round draft picks. That's my. That's all they hope. I hope that they don't look at this thing and say, "All right, cool." They can go pick up a Jordan Davis. They can go pick up a Stingley, and they can go pick up um, hmm, who else? Nicobe Dean. They could be or or Kenyon Green or a uh, who else they need because they had one of their one of their offensive linemen to retire or Zion Johnson. They literally got those guys that can fall right to them. But one thing about draft picks, Cowboy Nation. And I got to be real with you guys. Uh, yeah, Jeremy says, yeah, the, the Eagles can't draft. <laughs> You're right. Now, they can will and deal they, they socks off. They can get rid of a player just like that, and they can figure out how to get things afloat. I mean, we were laughing, literally. That's why it's hard for me to laugh at the Eagles. We were literally laughing at the Eagles with Chip Kelly. We were laughing. And then the next year or what have you, they get a whole nother coach. And then we were laughing like, ah, ha, ah, ha. And then the laugh came back on us in 2017. We were like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> we were literally, man, I, I can't make this stuff up, man. We were laughing. My brother, I got a brother that's a diehard Eagles fan. And I was like, man, come on, Eagles. <laughs> it's over with for y'all. And then the next year, you know, it's the Eagles waiting. I said, man, ain't no way. Are you not entertained? Ain't no way. Are you not entertained? <laughs> I mean, the Eagles, man, and they were the team, like, at the end of the day, I was like, okay, cool. They won a Super Bowl at least Tom. I was trying to find a positive aspect out of it, but it's hard. And I said, well, at least Tom Brady didn't win another Super Bowl. And then the next year, Tom Brady wins another Super Bowl. I was like, ah, it was misery for me. But it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, uh, Joshua says the Lions get five picks every year. So, so this is how the picks work, Cowboy Nation. Draft picks are long investments. You rarely get a Parsons, right? But to hit on three Parsons – would be a miracle, right? And the Eagles are not known to do such. And on top of that, the the, the draft itself, you got to you got to do this right here with the draft. Hear me out. There there's this thing called growing pains, learning curves. So the younger your team is, and the lack of coaches you have with experience creates disorder creates a situation whereas the team that you think that you have because on paper it looks good will be a team that can't pull out a win because you got an inexperienced coach and then you have a young young team 
Now, normally when you manifest that and you utilize that, if you can grow together, it would take time. Case in point law, do you have any history on it? Well, I got some historical data for you. You see the 1989 Cowboys, trash, but they were developing. They was going through growing pains. They took a coach. That was the Maverick and Jerry Jones. They took a coach who never coached in the NFL, who everybody said that his philosophy and scheme would not work for the pros, for grown men. But he took a young team, and they started to develop chemistry, pattern. And what was good for him is the team had first-round draft pick caliber players. Troy Aikman, first-round draft pick. Oh, Emmitt Smith, you already know his story. A, A, Michael Irvin, who came from the old administration, right? But he came through an injury and everything. And eventually, those guys learned to play together. But it only happened not because of Jerry Jones, it only happened because you had a coach with big cojones who really got into the mud, got it out of the mud, who was really willing to say, I'm going to bench you. I can replace you. I can toss you asunder. That come from hard coaching. It wasn't no pacifying going on. I come here to tell you, if the role was reversed, if it was switched around, and Barry Switzer was here in 1989, the Cowboys would have been the laughing stock of the NFL for firing Tom Landry and bringing in Barry Switzer and bringing in a guy who, you know, you guys get what I'm saying? But a lot of people go over their head. It was necessary. It was absolutely necessary to have that hard coaching. And what I can tell you guys right now, the Dallas Cowboys, regardless of what we have as it relates to on the field, our hope would be that Dan Quinn can coach up this defense and keep them guys coming, right, and keep those guys afloat. And our other only hope would be that Mike McCarthy is looking at this thing like, man, my back is against the wall. I need to have troops. I need to have people in my corner. And that would be our only hope. They forced me to hire they forced me to hire Kellen Moore. The only positive part that I can bring out and pull out on this one, Cowboy Nation. You missed Toby's. All right, let me see. We appreciate y'all, man. I'll be going home. Let me see what Toby said. Shout out to Toby. Just wanted to say you the man law and I appreciate you. Keep working, bro. Yeah, Toby. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. And if I missed your chat, man. Oh, ah, God dog it. I supposed to do the jersey giveaway. Let me let me put the names. I gotta put the names in here while we do the jersey giveaway before um before we depart and all of that stuff. Let me let me do that. Let me do that. Uh no no no. Don't wanna block nobody. Here we go. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Fire Kelly Moore. Chris Bates, man. Kelly Moore got the <sighs> We ain't gonna get rid of Kelly Moore. Let me see. Cause I really want to, I really want to do this the uh, proper way. Appreciate everybody for jumping in. Thank you everybody for being part of this episode. Uh, as we guys talk about for the breaking news is that Bobby Wagner signed with um, the LA Rams, who they allowed to say, okay, hey, if you think our offer is bad, go test the market, man. Go check out other teams that you would like to play for and see if they can give you a, a similar offer or match their, the offer that we have so that you can be comfortable. And what happened here collectively is that none of that happened. <laughs> you know, None of that worked out for the Cowboys. None of that stuff, let me see. None of that stuff worked out for the Cowboys of allowing them to, uh, allowing Bobby to see who else can get money or whatever. Here go to the list. Okay, hold on. Y'all bear with me, bear with me. I got to insert these names into the wheel. And these are all the people that's on the uh, the halftime app. And y'all bear with me. I'm going to put the wheel of names here. We're building the plane while it's in the air. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. Um, <clears throat> here we go. Boy, we got a lot of names on here. Keith Floyd name in there multiple times. There we go. Woo-woo. 
over 400 names on this wheel. Okay. Yeah. We're going to get it going. We're going we gonna to get this thing going. By the time this music end, I should have. I ran up a check, I might do it again. And the means close, I mean, close. Me nail friends. Ten toes down, I'll be free until the How many end. Toes? Crew outside the Ten. city, I don't feel safe in my ass. Took so many years, I'm just waiting for the wins. I'm in debt to no one but the one who took my sins. Yeah. I do it for real, there's no reason to pretend. If I do it once, I do it again. Add it up, add it up. All right, for those who don't know, man, uh, we 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 giving away uh, a, the Playmakers jersey. I'm only doing it now, so I won't forget later. And I got everybody named that's in the list that's part of the community that gave donations. Your name is in there for the month of March. And speaking of that, just to honor the Playmaker one more time, let's see what he had to say again. Play it, Playmaker. There's no way you can say this team is better. It's what area are you trying to get better in? On the football field or in the financial salary cap area? What area has been the dominant thought here? And obviously, it's been the salary cap. So we can't say that they're getting any better on the football field. No way, no way, no way. Come on. No fault. I done doubled up on the workload. up on the workload, baby. I I fell in love with the yeah. bankroll. Pray up, get money, then we lay low. Then we lay low. Come on. Who gonna be the one? Drew. Drew, hit me up. Hit me up. Jump in my DMs, Drew. Jump in. Uh, let's say, send me an email, Drew. The email address is lawsnation at gmail.com. Send it on over there, baby. Drew, hit me up. You got, I'm going to give you 24 hours. Let's run it again. We're going to run it three times to represent the three Super Bowls we won in the 90s, right? Come on, let, let, let's, let me see this one. Let me give you guys this one. Nah, I don't like that one. Let me go. Let's run it up. Five, four, three, two, one. So, Drew, your name is in there. Come on. Uh, I've Come been on, really in the field, I Michael. Helton, 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 Helton. Come on, run it, run it, baby. Yeah, you the other selection. You second placed on this list. So if Drew don't hit me up, Michael. It would be nice for Michael to get Michael, you know, Jersey. You know, that would be nice. Come on. Helton, man, you've been, you been in the donation feed for a minute, bro. You've been. So you've been putting in. Charge it to the game. Hey, who in law? Come on. One more time for your mind, baby. Come on. I mix Nike with designer, I experiment You just rock what's on the shelf and I'm not feeling it Search for the one, but baby girl, it's nothing real as this Can't trust a soul, I keep a hammer DT I've been really in the field Daryl, you, you're the third person, man So in that order, we got Drew, we got Michael, and then we got Daryl, you know so, uh, y'all guys, hit me up And uh, Eric Mack said, hey man, is this a giveaway show or what? Nah you know, I, I try to give back to the people that give to me, and uh, and then that's just how it goes. So, and they can take the jersey; it's authentic. It's not the Walmart edition. It won't wash off when the rain hit it. And it's a jersey that you can, uh, even if you don't wear jerseys, wear somebody else's name. You can put it on the wall or something, man. That's a Hall of Famer jersey, man. And when you see the price tag on it, when you get it, you're gonna be like, man, I, I might want to sell it. You know, this is how it is. But uh, shout out to you, Drew uh, Darrell. Shout out to Drew, and shout out to, um, who was the other guy? Uh, Michael Helton, man. Appreciate y'all, man. Thank y'all so much, man. Uh, y'all want me to keep going and talk about something else, or y'all want me to stop this show? Y'all, what, what y'all want to do, man? What y'all want to do? What y'all want to do? I've seen a lot of people ran off. They're like, shoot, he ain't talking about no heat no more. The law ain't bad anymore, so uh, we're going to run off from it. You know, keep going. That's from Jay Lombardi. Who else want to keep going? Who want me to keep going? <laughs> Yeah, who want me to keep going? Y'all let me know. 
Because, uh, you know, it is what it is at this point. It is what it is. Because right now. Thief! Stop! Thief! Come back! Thief! Is Anthony Barr. Look, somebody put. Let me put your names back up here on the chat. Is uh, Anthony Barr. Is Anthony Barr uh, uh, going, going to the Cowboys or coming to the Cowboys? Scott Moore, uh, I, I, Toby, I really like Scott Moore. I really do. <laughs> yeah, Michael Irvin, Jersey. Yeah, but it's Michael Helton. That also, I don't know who is uh, Michael Helton. If he's a football player, but he's been a guy that's been donating. Yeah. Uh, is 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 there news out there that Anthony Barr coming to the Cowboys? No, he's not. Because Anthony Barr fell off last year. And if you guys mad at uh, Keanu Neal's play, you'd be mad at Anthony Barr's play. And that could be because of his positioning coach left. You know, he, he's, he had not been the same since George Edwards left. Right? So, and we got George Edwards right here. Uh, AF, AF, boycott. You, you can't boycott the Cowboys. It's impossible. Because the, the money is already paid in advance. All right, put the NFL new TV deal. And this is just a TV deal. We're not even talking about. We're not even talking about the actual gambling deal. NFL media rights deal. This is the media rights deal. Give fans more option to watch the game. The NFL has signed a new long-term contract, basically, to broadcast rights agreements with multiple media partners valued at more than $110 billion over the next 11 years. This new agreement will start on the year of 2023. So there's nothing you can do about boycotting. And especially, it's, these guys already got their money. That new deal is already paid in full. They, they will laugh at you for not buying merch and not helping out with the organization because all it's doing is going to fly. It's going to, it's going to get like when I went to go purchase, when I went to go purchase this, this, this Jersey right here, the lady that runs that store, didn't you know, let me just, let me talk business with you guys. Did you know that she had to buy the rights to sell Cowboys merchandise in that particular store? So although she's selling Cowboys merch, she had to buy a franchise tag, basically a franchise purchase agreement to sell Cowboys material in that store. But if she don't hit a certain number, if she don't sell a certain amount of goods, it's not going to fall on Jerry Jones head. No, it's going to fall on her investment. So by you not buying merch, it's only going to hurt her. <laughs> You know, so that's the reality of it. Buy bootleg. Yeah, well, you can buy bootleg, you know. <laughs> but nobody want to do that. You know, that's illegal. But what I'm saying is that the Cowboys and other NFL teams, they do revenue sharing. It's a brilliant idea. All of the owners, all of the 32 owners are already billionaires. Newsflash. They didn't get, I know I feel you, Derek, David. <laughs> uh, stop buying game tip, tickets. <sighs> let me tell you something. The game tickets, let me break this down. Let me break this down. This is just, this, this is going this to turn into a financial show. The game tickets is revenue more to the state, to the state that have to furnish the big old stadiums. The game ticket revenue is just trash and trinket revenue. The money is where the, where the TV turns on. That is where the money at. The state, the state of Texas and the city of Arlington pay for the stadium to be there. They get sales taxes off of the revenue that's generated. The, the actual impulse to grow the economy when you the surrounding restaurants that's why you got texas live and all of those places they get a kickback from every time you go into the game all of those businesses around the stadium 
they benefit for the people to come there. That's why the property taxes and the sale taxes is higher in Arlington. So if you refuse, if you refuse to go to the game, it's not hurting the Jones family. It will only hurt the surrounding businesses and the surrounding communities because they already paid in advance. They already have earmarked that money for the usage of parking, the usage of infrastructures, of roads and beyond. This is economy. That's why the taxes and the sale prices and everything else is skyrocketing. Even <clears throat> so when you're talking about trying to defeat Jerry Jones by not buying tickets, all that will do is for the neighboring team, for the teams that come in on the outskirts to go buy those tickets, meaning that instead of having a lot of Cowboy fans in there, they're going to fill those seats regardless. And that's why they get everything as relates to the hotels and everything else, the tourist attraction, because the moment you play, let's say it's embarrassing enough. If you say don't buy the tickets, it will be more embarrassing. If you see the opposing team more in the fans and the stadium than your own team and still benefiting and growing from your city. So that is what's going on. This is a 100% boycott proof recession proof entertainment business it is so <laughs> so by refusing to go to the games buying gear until the real it's not doing they laughing they literally laughing <laughs> they, they laughing they laughing. They said, you, you, you the guy that refusing. You, you got to take, put it like this. You got to take the Dallas Cowboys. You got to take, put it like this. this. This is a better way to say it. You got to take individualism out of it. Appreciate the donation. Mad support for Law Nation. Shout out to you, Simon. Thank you so much for the $20 donation. I really appreciate you. Guys. <sighs> You got to take the individualism out of it. You got to. 32 teams, one brand, the NFL. All of the money goes into one pot. There's that, That's why it's really nothing but bragging rights when teams go to the playoffs, teams go to the Super Bowl, or what have you. There's no extra incentives but bragging rights to whip out and say, hey, this is what we doing with this organization. It's like a bookie. You win, you still you win, you still get money. You lose, you still get money. That we created. Look, yeah, David, we created a monster. It's a recession-proof business. It is. I wish. And, and then you got to get voted in to get in. Even if I had twenty billion dollars in my back pocket. I would literally have to get voted in. I would have to look before I can even get in to buy or purchase a team. I got to get voted in by them. <laughs> I have to have a standing long record of approvals from them. I had to shake a certain hand to get in. They wouldn't even allow me to get into that circle. That is the most. It is the, the wealthiest circle you can be in. To be in the National Football League as the owner, you know, <laughs> you know. So, outside of Jerry Jones doing something uh, like the Clippers owners did, or or something egregious like uh, of saying something, and getting caught on on camera doing something so egregious, he have things already put into place. Whereas he will fall on the sword, and the next one up will be. I literally think Charlotte Jones will probably be the next one up. Or it could be Jerry Jones. I mean, uh, Jerry Jones Jr. Or it could be Stephen Jones. This is a recession-proof business, baby. I hate to say that, but that's just how it is, Cowboy Nation. That, that is the reality of it. Um, <clears throat> Law, think about it. 80% of the opponents in our house, yeah, 20% of the fans will be embarrassed. And the Jones hate that and will send a message. 
But it goes back to my other argument. That's a good truth right there, except the truth. Let me let, me let the AI, let, let Siri say it. She Law think about 80% of opponents in our house and 20% of our fans there will be embarrassing and the Jones hate that it will send a message. The only thing about that, it goes all the way back to my original argument. There are more casual fans than there are diehard fans. And when you go out there, and the other thing of it, sip the truth, it's hard to sway a fan base that's above 500. For the most part of 27 years, we've been above 500. We've been above 500. We were 12 and 5 last year. There's literally Jets fans, Jaguar fans. Even you can throw in Detroit Live fans and saying, what the world are these whiny cowboy fans are talking about? They got a good owner. They are in the thick of it every year. They had only one losing season since 2016. One. It is the year 2022. One losing season since 2016. Jason Garrett, oh, yeah, and his whole tenure, Jason Garrett, I believe, had only one losing season, and it was in 2015. The other year, he started off kind of rocky. He got in, and that's why he didn't get over eight wins. That's hard to sell a bunch of people. When you are in the middle of the road, Hear me out, Cowboy Nation. I get it. We want Jerry gone. We want the coach gone. We want all of these people gone. But it is hard to paint the picture of saying that this franchise is doomed when you're winning that amount of games, especially if those games are at home. If you're in Texas area, I'm going to read this from Ken Hart. If you are in Texas area, when I go talk to my barber, she said she loves it when the Cowboys win. I said, oh, are you a Cowboys fan? She said, no. I can't stand the Cowboys. I said, dang. <laughs> you got you to stop cutting my hair. And then she said, but I love it when they win. I root for them. I said, why? Business boom. The optimism is crazy. It's contagious. Profits are everywhere. People talk to you. The driving, the traffic, everybody is good. And if you look at it, when you're winning in Dallas, shoo, it's a good optimism. It's a good feeling, a good vibe. How many skeletons do you think these real old owners of these teams dating back to the 20s, 30s, and 40s, and 40s God make closet? <sighs> Even the ones that leak. Even the ones look, look, man. I'm a look. If I get too deep with this thing, Cowboy Nation, man, shoot, they gonna come pull this channel. <laughs> but even the ones that leak, we be like, oh, wait a minute. Hmm. Think about what Jerry Jones been living with for twenty seven years, twenty six years. 26 years he's been living with that secret for it to get leaked. How you think he felt about that? And looking at the money that he paid, this dude make that in a $375,000. He make that just like that. Right now, if I can, if I can shake Jerry hand, $375,000 can fall out of his pocket and he won't even miss it. Where's that watch I had, you know? Oh, I think the gardener picked it up. I tell him he can have it. $375,000, you know. That's all he gave. That's all he gave. And the whole case, 
is from what her lawyers are saying. They don't, she don't even want the money. She just want the acknowledgement. That's crazy. But that's the story that leaked. What about the ones that didn't? Whew. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Come on. Shoot. I ain't going to talk too much. Fool around and be like. There's a Dallas man that kind of looked like James Harden and showed up missing. <laughs> he is now found on 635. You know, look, I, I, I can't go too deep into this thing. But, man, baby, y- y'all got to know, man, that this thing goes beyond what we see on the football field. Let's go beyond that, man. Shoot. Boy, I'm about to say something else before I get kicked off this thing for real, for real. <laughs> Come on, man. I tell you what. You take a pair of scissors. And you place it on somebody's neck. And that person, now I'm going to go into more details, reported it to the police and they showed the blood and everything else. And let me know what you get off scot-free. That's the power. That's the power the family got, baby. (laughs) Sure. You try to ride around through Dallas. With 20 pounds of that good stuff and get poured over. And don't spend more than a weekend in the slammers. Man, come on, baby. And still work and still have the start on your chest. That's power, baby. Shoot, one thing we all adore. Something worth dying for. There's nothing but pain. We stuck in this game. Searching for fortune and fame. <laughs> oh my goodness, man. They got enough money to do that, and you don't have enough money to tell Bobby Wags, hey dog, all I want you to do is uh drive down here to Arlington. There's a tree stump. Go past that tree stump, take a left, and there's a garbage bin. Look at the bottom of it, and there's something waiting for you. You know. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, my gosh, man. Uh, Oh, my gosh, man. Let me get off of here, man. Let me get off that topic. Like when the Rams on a mysteriously drowned on the beach and the wife took off. Yep. Mysteriously. You know, let me me stop talking. I got to go out to Oxnard this year. (laughs) I don't want to know. Sad news today, there's a, uh, a content creator by the name of Laws Nation uh, Sports and it reported that he's now missing. Uh, he was out last reported seen out there in Oxnard, and now he's nowhere to be found. Uh, th- wait a minute. Oh, oh, we have more news. He's still alive. He's like Tupac Machiavelli. This law, baby. <laughs> It's law. I'll be doing from the grade. Thank you for tuning in to the Law Nation film session. As we take a deeper look at Parsons, I'm, I'm somewhere in between Costa Mesa and uh, on the beach of Pelican Bay. <laughs> I can't tell you where I'm at, but I don't talk too much. <laughs> oh, my gosh, man. Uh, all right, man. I'm supposed to be gone. I see y'all, y'all running off from me, man. All right, let me, let me bring up this. No, nah, I ain't going to play that one. I can play it. I can play it. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we play it. Compared me and, and Trayvon, we play completely different. Like, I always play out of phase. He always plays in phase. Yeah. Um, well, also, Trayvon gave up over 1,000 yards. That's because he always plays in phase, but he also had 11, 12, maybe 13 You got to make 12 That's picks crazy. if you give up the most yards in the league. But but he plays different though. He plays in, he plays in phase. I he play take, out of phase. RC, he take you take chances. No, he said he, he does. He you jump. Yeah, I was gonna say he, that like, some people take there, chances. There, some there, people there, don't. There exactly. are some it's just a difference of it's a different style of how he plays. I agree. If you are if you are a guy who plays in phase a lot like he does, you are gonna have to have a lot of picks, which yep. he does though. Yeah, he does. So it, it's, it's working out for him. He one of the best at doing that. Yeah. Shout out to the Pivot Podcast and Ryan Clark and. All that he do for that uh, podcast. Jalen Ramsey didn't fall for that trap. And we know 
Trayvon Diggs on his way. He a top DB in the NFL. So uh, a lot of people ask me, like, Law, uh, what is in phase and out of phase? Uh, this is a good example. You can you can play the ball. You can and I'll get right here. I'm gonna stop right here. You can play the ball, right? And when you phase, phasing is <clears throat> you getting the good feel of the receiver and his breaks, and especially on the top of his route when he sink his hips. You can do two things. Either you can play play the position to take the ball, phase in, or you can be out of phase. So when he catches the ball, catches the ball, you hit the ball out, you punch the ball out, or you make sure you tackle him so that he can't get more yards. So what what Jalen says, the, the two different styles and kinds of caliber of DBs that they are is what Trayvon Diggs do differently. He will phase in, get a good feel of the receiver, by touching, I'm, I'm moving like I'm the dog. Oh, <laughs> he's getting a good phase in. He making sure he don't open his hands up too high or too low, so they won't call it. And when the ball is released, he's going for the ball at all costs. Now the problem is with that. If you miss, it's 30 yards that way or 40 yards that way. Normally, a good situation for that if you have a safety over the top that can roam sideline to sideline, that understands the terminology or understands where you are going to be at with the football, then he can set two. And when you phase him to go in for that INT or when you bumping him off of his route, that safety is there for your safety help, you see. That's why I say most DBs get more aggressive when they know that they got a proven safety help over the top. If you want to really... Look into it this way. I think it was Bourne against the um, Kendrick Bourne. Was it? What's his name? Kendrick Bourne. Uh, the the uh, Patriots game. He phased in. He went for it, but the over the top help came in too quickly, and he was out of position. So it's going to be on Trayvon Diggs. All Trayvon Diggs had to do is play the sticks, allow him to catch the ball and knock it out. But now nah, Trayvon is going for the pick or Trayvon get lost at the situation because he he's not guessing on a route, but he's understanding the concept of what the wide receiver is trying to do. And he's trying to take that away. So when people say phase in, phase out, that is what he's saying is that what Jalen does and he does a damn good job at it. And I'm not discred- discrediting Jalen Ramsey. He does a good job at it. Excuse my French. He does a good job. Of phasing out, seeing the as the play progress, and once the ball is there, he immediately goes to the spot and either punch the ball out or he will lay the wood. Jalen can lay the wood on you, and you will feel bad about it, right? And you say, "Well, dang, this dude is aggressive." And in press coverage, he is really aggressive at the top and really aggressive at the release. Now he do get burned sometimes as well. All you have to do is look up Jamar Chase what he did to him in the Super Bowl. But two different styles of DBs. Now, my only knock on my guy, Trayvon Diggs, is against those short area quickness guys, those speedy receivers like uh, Brandon Ayuk. I don't like that matchup on Trayvon Diggs. Or like the kid that played for the uh, Giants, uh, Tony, whatever his name is, Kadarius Tony. Kadarius Tony, Tyreek Hill type of wide receivers. I don't like those guys as it relates to what uh, Trayvon Diggs do. And low-key, Jalen Ramsey shouldn't like those twisty, those, those, those short area quickness, fast, speedy guys. Because they, 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 they got good hips, but it's not the best. You know, it's switching. So that's just what it is. Uh, everyone soft in Dallas, I feel you. Patrick killed, killed Dicks. Diggs, um, Tim Patrick kills Diggs. Okay, <laughs> kids Diggs. I can't read today. C. Burleson, I appreciate you. Um, that was a 50 50 ball that he brought in, right? But if you were to match it up, if I were to match it up day in and day out, I think that Trayvon Diggs will win in most of his situations. But 
that game, Tim Patrick was a dog. I ain't going to even lie. He was pretty good in that game. But that still was a 50-50 ball. <laughs> it wasn't like – like a good example, Tim Patrick is not better than uh, – what's the wide receiver from Texas A&M that played for the Buccaneers? What's his name? Y'all put his name in, in the chat right quick. Y'all put his name in the chat. He ain't that. And Diggs locked him down. Uh, Mike Mike uh, Evans, right? Y'all put his name. So, and uh, of course, yeah, uh, Tim Patrick is not Terry. Yeah, Mike Evans. Just look at the tape. Look at the tape of what Diggs did to Mike Evans against a known quarterback that can throw that ball around too. So I like I like digs against those type of frame of of uh, wide receivers. By the way, ain't no way in the world people would pick Tim Patrick over over Mike Evans. So you know it is what it is. Uh, it is what it is. Yep. <clears throat> But this is another thing, and, and I gotta say this, and, and I'm and I gotta defend my guy Trayvon Diggs. The other thing would be when you look at DBs that play for the Cowboys, everything is on prime time, everything is visible, and you will get burned. But I just wish that you know the, the Jalen Ramsey stuff. He's good. But if we see Michael Gallup got him, Michael Gallup got him, boy. <laughs> they just cheated and said uh, flag or what have you. I promise you, Diggs, Diggs can lock your number one down, George, Georgie. I'm not going to call Diggs just a lockdown, shutdown type of cornerback. I'm not going to call him that, but he's a doggone good cornerback. I'm not finna go around saying he's a shutdown. He's a shutdown. And what will happen? Go listen to, go listen to my guy Dion Prime. That over the course of the years, you will build your reputation, and teams will shy away. And when Diggs get that type of respect, ooh, it's over with. And then he will get that shutdown. When teams are foolish enough to keep trying to throw the ball his way, he ticks, he picks it off, and then we'll see the full, full aspect of Diggs' game. But what people do is people fail to realize that Diggs, that was his second year. People talking like Diggs being a cornerback in the league for five to six years. This is Trayvon Diggs' second year. Well, last year was his second year. Second year. And y'all holding this man feet to the fire like he's a five-year vet, which, which is crazy. Flat out crazy. And watch. Watch. Watch Kelvin Joseph. When you go back and watch his tapes, and this is what I'll do tonight. I'm going I'm to bring up, I'm going to pull up all the Kelvin Joseph tape, what he did for this last season, and I'm going to showcase what he brings to the table. And I can't wait. But I, but my only thing with Kelvin Joseph and uh, the philosophy of this front office with Terrence Steele, those two guys, those two guys, is why if you knew that you had your heart set on moving off and you speaking all of this glow talk about Terrence Steele, why not give him the all of the reps and bench Lyle Collins? Why put him back? Why play musical chairs? You could have just kept Terrence Steele at that right tackle so we would know what, what he's going to do for the 2022 season. Right. That's all you had to do. And the same could be said about Kelvin Joseph. Although Antonio Anthony Brown, I meant to say, had a good year as far as his uh, stats, what have you. But if he's going to be thrusted and you talking now that he's going to be your starting corner, rip the Band-Aid off, man. Let him get those gro go through those growing pains last year. So now we're going to have to sit back and say, OK. Can Terrence still play 17 weeks? That's going to be one thing that we have to bring up. And can Kevin Joseph play for 17 weeks? All right. Cowboy Nation, I'm tired of talking, man. I appreciate y'all so much for jumping in. Uh, thank those who shared this content. If you're watching. Shame. Shame. 
Shame. And you have not hit that like button. Come on now. Appreciate everybody. Uh, once again, hit me up. D- shoot me a DM. Um, Drew, Drew, Castelline, and Michael Helton and David Thorpe. Man, y'all hit me up, man. Uh, Madman says Kevin is a bust. I'm going to remember that now. I'm going to remember that. <laughs> Yeah, I will remember that for now. Come on now. You know, he's one of my guys. Finish him. You know. Hey, hey, for that, you know, what what, what would Jerry say? What would Jerry say? Uh, Come on, where my button at? Come on, where my button at? Come on, what, what, what would Jerry say? I'm, we're going to have a good vision, but uh, settle down just a little bit. I don't have the patience to jack with you today. You no, know, I don't have the patience to jack with you now. <laughs> No, bro. But uh, I feel you. Let me know. D- did you want it, uh, Shante Samuel Jr.? You wanted him, right? You wanted him. You know, I, I wanted I wanted uh, Kevin Joseph. I, I liked him, and uh, I wanted Trayvon too. More rich. I want I wanted him uh, on his team, but the Raiders r- Raiders hated on us. But it is what it is. Cowboy Nation. I love DBs though, by the way, and I love. Uh, Check out Trent McDuffie. Oh, my gosh, man. Check him out. Oh, my gosh. Coming out of this draft. Oh, yeah. yeah. Check him out. Look at Garrett Wilson. Yeah. It is what it is. Shout out to everybody that's watching. Thank those who tuned in. Hey, Cowboys, we missed out, but that's okay. We got money, baby. We got money. And it's what... My guy, the playmaker, would say it is what it is. There's no way you can say this team is better. It's what area are you trying to get mm-hmm. better in? On the football field or in the financial salary cap area? What area has been the dominant thought? Mm-hmm. And obviously, it's been the salary cap. So we can't say that they're getting any better on the football field. Well, on the football field, that is where you earn it, baby. The playmaker, you know that, and we all know it too. So the Cowboys, they making the mountain even taller. I tell people all the time, when the end comes for me, let it find me conquering a new mountain, not sliding down an old one. And I'm giving you guys the play-by-play. I don't know the outcome. I don't want to say that I'm right. I'm right all the time. I'm going to make my faults. I'm going to fail. I'm going to fall, but I'm going to fall still fighting. Write this down, Cowboy Nation. If you want a thing bad enough to go out there and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time and your peace and your sleep for it, if all of your desires of it makes you quite mad enough, but you don't get tired of it, and it makes you hold all other things tardy and cheap, if life itself seems empty and useless without it, and all that you scheme and dream is about it. If you'll gladly go out there and sweat for it and fret for it and plan for it and lose all terror of your mind for it. If you will simply, oh, just simply go after the thing you want. If dogged and grim and besiege and beset it with the help of Almighty, you will get it. And hopefully the Cowboys understand that part of it, Cowboy Nation. Even like they say out of the nights that cover me black as a pit from pole to pole. I thank God for my unconquerable soul in the fell clutches of circumstance. I have not winced nor cried out loud. But hey, there's chances that we can keep our head straight through the finish. Cowboy Nation, that's been my time. I really thank you all for yours. And remember, you're listening to nothing but the best. Yeah, I'm going to try to motivate somebody to run through a brick wall. <laughs> they say, hey, man, the opposition is too big. We too small. Just give me a smooth rock, baby. Let's go. Phone ringing and I tell him it's ice. I got what you get on bling and she ice. Freeze. Freeze. Photo. Photo. Please. Please. No photos. No, no. Jeez. Jeez. No, no. No. Please. No photos. That's all we can hope for.
the door mad, in the man. dungeon just Whole team here, money some Venomous. Still young, but I move like a Veteran. New deal to my lawyer to If you're down in my management I'm just warming up a way to lie Oh, producer saw the numbers one Once. Different colors in my baggy light Chalk it up, yep. talk of the town where you're talking I'm mad, up but I'm glad you, it's bring the same you tough enough. Wanna get you new things with your pockets dull Run it up, I used to be quiet and out of luck Now I'm hey, up from a club Hating the jealousy, my mama oh, team me No doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. So when the Cowboys say that they don't have any money, man, and uh, <laughs> they say, hey, man, these are the things that's going on. Now, so the cocaine is happening. When does that crack come into play for you? <laughs> Nobody's like me. Phone ringing and I tell him it's Pricey. I got wifey on bling and she Icy. freeze. Free. Photo. photo, please, please. no photos. No, no, jeez, no, 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 please, no photos. Nowadays, nothing really is. Icy. Only one of me and nobody's like me. Phone ringing and I tell him it's Pricey. I got wifey on bling and she Icy. freeze. Free. Photo. photo, please, please. No, photos. no, no, jeez, no, no, please, no photos. Are you embarrassed? Are you embarrassed as an organization about how the team is hey, playing? Get your damn act together. You're set. Okay? be wanting to tell those boys to lean forward so bad. This 